distinguished panel of speakers, and uh, good afternoon to every, all ladies and gentlemen. I know we're getting closer to lunchtime. I'll try and spike up the discussion a little bit by adding a little energy dose with methanol. Being very different, we've been talking a lot about solar and wind for the last nearly now a day and a half. And so probably what happened is actually we were doing a lot of work in some extremely remote, extremely difficult areas in the last two years and two and a half years or so. It's while working in these places that we realized that sometimes most of the other technologies, including the renewable ones like solar, the people were not able to depend on because of the weather conditions, altitude connect, uh, you know, conditions, and similarly, the wind was not an option at all. The connectivity at some of these places in the Northeast, in JNK, a couple of other hill states, and all was so difficult that we were trying to see what can there be a solution to these places as well while we are addressing the other places. Uh, that's where we, you know, hit upon fuel cells, and we started researching fuel cells and see as to if these could also bridge this extreme and the final gap for running uh, certain mission critical applications as also to power small hamlets, detachments, which are extremely isolated. So it is with this that we got into fuel cells, which use methanol as a fuel. And uh, before I go on to that, I must add that methanol today is being looked as one of the major fuels in future. China has already migrated about 10% of its fuel economy onto methanol. And today, the government of India, the Niti Aayog, is looking in future to gasify our coal reserves and create methanol, creating methanol out of bio waste from other sources of energy because this could be a future fuel in many ways. With that, I'll just come on to a little bit. I'll explain a little bit about fuel cells before I go on to how they can possibly power a microgrid, I would say, not exactly a mini grid. Before that, I mean, keeping this as the background that we created this new company called FC Technology, which is basically fuel cells and how we can create energy out of that. So I'll go on more into a little bit exactly onto the fuel cells. I'll explain this in a very layman term. What happens is the fuel cell is basically generating electricity using methanol as a fuel. And what happens is it pulls in methanol. There are no moving parts inside the fuel cell as such. You have only the cathode and the anode side. And what happens is it's something like creating a drink now, what happens is the fuel cell pulls in air and creates water inside the fuel cell. And it is this water which then reacts with your methanol in a percentage of something like 3% of methanol and about 97% of water. And it is using this chemical reaction and a catalyst that you are able to produce energy, especially in a very high density compared to the small size of the fuel cell. And separating the two cathodes and the anodes between is basically an electrolyte membrane which separates the two sides. Now, what happens? The great advantage, as long as you have fuel, you will have continuous electricity as long as you want to have it. It's an absolutely steady flow of electricity. There are no fluctuations. And similarly, you can run it for a couple of hours, days, weeks, months together without stopping if you so need. Now, another great advantage is that here you can work, the fuel cells also work in tandem with other forms of energy. Say you have a solar plant there, the solar is working, the solar switches off or goes off due to bad weather or at night time, you automatically switch on to fuel cells. It can work with, through an inverter with the AC mains or other forms of energy. So that's the great advantage that they can form a very effective option as a hybrid option or also as a standalone as well. I'll list out some of the major benefits, you know, as far as fuel cells are concerned. I mean, uh, they're very efficient, extremely compact. I would say and very small in size. I would say a fuel cell which is generating electricity equivalent of a 2.5 kVA genset, say, which is about, say, 60 to 70 kgs. The corresponding fuel cell is going to be just about 10 to 12 kgs weight. Say that generator takes about, say, is running on diesel. It's consuming, say, about, say, one and a half to two liters of diesel in an hour. Here, one liter of methanol will give you almost 10 to 15 hours of electricity at peak load, depending on the conditions that you're going to be using. 
Another great advantage, I mean, you go further in altitude, as you go, say, from 6,000 to 9,000, 12,000, 15,000, the efficiency of everyone, including human beings, goes down. Whereas fuel cells, even we have tested them on an extended duration at altitudes with the army with, at places like Tiger Hill and all at 17,000 feet, there is zero drop in performance. That means you're getting 100% of the efficiency, which, I mean, you are stating before. And whereas the generators at that altitude were performing just at about 30 to 35% of their efficiency. So that is a great difference that comes in by using these fuel cells at such places. Of course, they are completely automatic. Now, what happens, a great advantage, the fuel cell was only going to be providing you electricity in the amount that you need. Say you're using a 100-watt fuel cell, and you, use, you need actually only 50 watts. So it's automatically going to supply you 50 watts, and therefore your fuel consumption is also in the same ratio going to dip down by half. So therefore the efficiency goes up further. That the fuel cells are completely automatic. They are able to sense the requirement and only supply you as per that. If you don't need power, they'll switch off. They will only switch on when you need the power again. I mean, it's of course, like today, everything being intelligent, you can monitor your fuel cells remotely. You can control them. You have preset alarms telling you about various functions of the fuel cell, including, you know, the battery, the fuel levels and all, so that automatically if you need to stock up more fuel or you need to replenish the fuel and all can be done. And uh, of course, the great advantage is they are easy to transport. They can, the fuel can be transported by air. It can be airdropped. And the other advantage is that in remote areas, be a major drop in your fuel logistics. The real cost of the fuel is actually in the fuel logistics because transporting uh, fuel in difficult areas, the cost goes up many times. And incidentally, even as of date, if you compare methanol with diesel, methanol is even as of today cheaper than diesel. I mean, yes, sir, sure. I'll also tell you about, like I've just briefly, that we have tested them extensively in Indian conditions over the last two years or so. We've taken them into some of the most remote places, difficult places, and uh, the result is that, you know, the performance has been absolutely flawless, steady current that you've been using. Oh, it's a little slow. Thanks. It's kind of hanging. So what I'll do is, as far as establishment of uh, uh, microgrids is concerned, we are working with the government of Arunachal Pradesh, and uh, we are using certain funds that they have been able to support after we demonstrated the capability of the fuel cells through the, they have a fund called the District Innovation Fund, and also as a border, border area development, you know, fund. It's called BADP projects and all. Under these fundings, uh, we are setting up a small uh, concept, uh, you know, demonstration for two small villages which have got about 15 hour houses and using a fuel cell which is just about a thousand watt fuel cell, we are able to power uh, about three to four lights, a television set and one additional device for at least 10 to 12 hours and if required it can go with the same fuel cell can take on running the same load for 24 hours non-stop and with that in mind that we are, they have identified a certain number of you know, villages and hamlets where these fuel cells are possibly going to be used as one of the means of electrification uh, because some of these places have no light or electricity. These are some of the pictures that we, you know, we have done testing at extremely high altitude places and to s validate the performance of the fuel cell at those places. And uh, so with that in mind, I mean, what we were trying to propose here is that fuel cells can be another viable option as a backup or a support for some of the other means of energy for rural electrification, especially in these kind of areas, they are also being found to be very viable option for running telecom towers. We are also in touch with a number of telecom companies to add as a backup or using fuel cells. And it greatly, again, removes the dependency on generator sets, reduces the requirement of having large battery banks. And again, uh, like was being brought out earlier, it cannot, it's of, the fuel is of no use, it cannot be stolen. So therefore, at a lot of these places where you have the issues related to theft of diesel and fuel, this fuel will not be of use to anyone in case they try to steal it and use it. So that's another place where, you know, you can plug the gaps as far as uh, the fuel cells are concerned. I mean, uh, 
uh, already talked about the safety of the products and the, this thing, and uh, I've already mentioned that they're extremely safe. The flash point of methanol, incidentally, is about 11 degrees higher than that of gasoline, so it's much more safer to use than as far as the other forms of uh, uh, diesel or petrol are concerned. I will just flash by, so I've already covered this. And uh, some of, the, I just brief out some of the, you know, the traction areas where fuel cells can be extremely effective, primarily industrial, defense and security, and even as far as the consumer is concerned, where we brought out the, you know, possible use as part of setting it up as part of a microgrid. And there can be, you know, useful for telecom, traffic management, wind, security and surveillance. Incidentally, one of the prime markets for the fuel cells currently worldwide is the oil and gas industry, which is finding it extremely useful for using fuel cells uh, in multiple applications, especially in remote areas where they don't find uh, other forms of energy that viable, and especially the operating cost being extremely low. I mean, I would not take further time. We are already running short of time. So with that, I will conclude here. And uh, if we have questions, we can take that on later, or I would be available outside. We can take on certain questions or queries that you may please have. I finished. Thank you.